How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We are looking at Workhorse and I wasn't planning on doing this, but there was some news that happened yesterday. There was an article that came out about Workhorse from a short seller. I want to talk about that, talk about what they discussed in the article and just go through it a little bit because it is an interesting article. It did cause the stock to go down dramatically and I want to hit on it because a lot of people were asking me whether it's time to sell Workhorse or whether they should stay in. And I want to go through my thoughts. So thank you guys for watching. Please hit the like button. I really appreciate that. Also, if you want, there is a link down there to Weeble. There's just a limited time still where you can get two free stocks for signing up. Just a $100 deposit will get you two free stocks worth up to $1,600 each. So Workhorse was down pretty significantly at the beginning of the day yesterday and then came back up about 9% and then dropped down a little bit. So it ended up about negative 2% on the day. What happened? Well... There was an article that came out by Fuzzy Panda Research. If you look them up, they're a very small uh, kind of Twitter account. They have a website. You know, they had so much traffic going to this, and they were covered by a couple different large news outlets that it actually caused their site to crash for a while. But if you look, they are basically doing a hit piece on Workhorse. So. If you take a look at it, you can see that they are shorting the stock, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, they're trying to produce their research and talk about the negative on Workhorse, talk about all the things that are wrong with Workhorse. But honestly, after reading through this, I think this is not even close to, I think, what they were trying to do, which was be similar to Hindenburg Research and what they did with Nikola, sending the stock price down dramatically and really uncovering a lot of good points. In this article, you know, I think there are a lot of issues with it, and I'll go through it. I'll talk about what they found and what they think, and just know that they have not disclosed who they are. Uh, Jack Spencer actually reached out to try to do an interview with them, and they haven't responded as of now, so they're trying to push the stock down, but they're not willing to, you know, put a face to their name. So, you know, that's kind of tough because we don't know if any of this is really real or if it's just some speculation that they have to try to, you know, manipulate the stock down. But let's take a look. So if you go through the first couple pages, they have summaries. I'm not going to go through the the whole thing because it's 53 pages. But if you look here, one of their first points is that there were some serious performance problems, including numerous critical failures. They're talking about how it ran out of their vehicle, ran out of range, got stranded on the road how there was a parking brake failure, and a lot of other stuff. So you can read through this more completely on your own time. But what I would say to this is, and just know, I'm not a professional stock analyst. I'm not uh, an insider. So you know, I could be wrong with this, but this is a prototype. They talk about this. They talk about how their prototype had an issue. Right here it says prototypes had serious problems. Prototypes are prototypes for a reason, right? They aren't the final product. That's why we have prototypes to try to work out the kinks. If we go down here a little bit more, it says Workhorse does not have the ability, machinery, or engineering to fulfill the USPS contract. So we've talked about this in previous videos before, but Lordstown has extended an arm to help Workhorse with this. Hitachi has also talked about helping them increase their output. So I'm not too worried about that. I don't think that's really a good reason uh, to be bearish on Workhorse. And I am going to talk about some of the things I think maybe were correct in this. So I'm going to get to that. As we keep going down, it says stock promotion can be a trade secret. It talks about how YouTubers with over 420 videos are spelling out some kind of stock promotion scheme, conspiracy that we're getting paid by Workhorse. And I'm just telling you right now, I've not gotten paid a cent from Workhorse or Lordstown or any other publicly traded company. You can even check out my video from yesterday where I talk about this a little bit more in depth. But, you know, I would just say right up the right off the bat that that is totally incorrect. I don't know why they're making the baseless claims. As we go down to you can take a look at all this filler part in here, but they're talking about insiders selling, and we've talked about this before. The insiders are selling based on a pre-scheduled plan, right? So they just sell off because most of their compensation is in shares. It's not in salary. So they are already setting these up months and years in advance. So I would not read into that too much either. One of the negative catalysts that they're talking about here, Q3 and Q4 revenue missed by Wall Street's, 
no one really cares about Q3 and Q4. So no one cares if you're an investor and you're long in workhorse about the next two quarters. Everyone's looking at the USPS contract. Everyone's looking years down the line, unless you're doing it for the short term. But even then, you don't care about Q3 and Q4. You're just hoping that we get the USPS contract. So that is the next point that I wanted to hit on. They also talk about Lordstown SPAC merger not getting close or, you know, getting delayed because they're saying that GM and new investors will realize that Steve Burns and Lordstown Motors have more red flags than Nikola. So I have no idea where this comes from, right? So I'd say this is very different, right? So Nikola purposely misled the shareholders with that hill and how they're rolling down a uh, semi truck down the hill. But nothing like that has happened with Workhorse or Lordstown. There's been nothing like what happened with Nikola with these companies so far. And I don't know, they don't really shed any light on that in this article. So I don't know what they're referring to exactly. And then they say down here that that Workhorse might go down to $1 a share if the USPS contract is lost. Now, I've always said that I think we'll go down to maybe $8 a share or something if we don't get the USPS contract, but then come up to 10 or 12 all of this, we don't really know, but with how many people are interested in Workhorse, I would find it very hard to believe that we would go down 95% plus if we don't get the USPS contract. There are some people that just didn't know about Workhorse before that will stay invested. Now, I'm not going to say everything in here is incorrect by any means. I just wanted to point out some of the things that really stood out to me. Obviously, there's probably something correct in here because it's 53 pages. This is a very beefy report. I read through the whole thing, but these are the things I wanted to hit on. Honestly, you know, I could be wrong. I'm not a professional, right? But neither are these people, it seems like. I mean, there is a level of unprofessionalism in this article, kind of personally attacking some YouTubers and like sicknesses that they have and different uh, things that they have to deal with in their personal lives. And there's some baseless claims in here. So I think you should definitely do your own research with this. You know, I've always said that there is some risk with Workhorse, right? This is not a safe stock. You don't invest in it because you think it's going to go up 5% a year for the next 10 years. This is speculative. This is why I diversify. This is why I only have about 3 to 5% of my portfolio in Workhorse. And I've been honest about that the whole time. You know, if we don't get the USPS contract, that's definitely a risk. Also, something that, you know, they try to cover in here is the product, right? We don't, we haven't personally test driven the product. With something like Apple, we can take an iPad home, we can, you know, play on their cell phones, we understand it, we can use it, we can tell when it's good and when it's bad. We've never driven a USPS uh, workhorse truck, right? So we don't know whatever prototype they're sending over there. We don't know if it's crap. So that's the thing that is more speculative to me. Not only do we not have the USPS contract, you know, definitely yet, but we also haven't actually driven the product. If they come out with a crap product, you can't find that in their Q3 or Q2 earnings report, right? That's something that you can't see in an earnings report online in a Yahoo Finance article. That's something that it takes a lot more of a personal touch. So that is my thinking on this. Definitely check out this article for yourself. Uh, it's it's interesting, but I think that for the most part, this has not changed my view at all. So I am still bullish on Workhorse. I'm not worried about this article. If anything, it was a good buying opportunity in my mind. But if, again, I am not a professional stock analyst. I've not been paid by Workhorse or Lordstown or anyone else to promote these stocks. So definitely do your own research. But thank you guys so much. If you want to support, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Definitely share this if you know anyone else invested in Workhorse. And check out the links below if you want some free stock. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.